Welcome to the Sailor Community Podcast. We are thrilled to have our friends Katie and Vicki Zilverberg, Teresa Cox, back on the Troika, the Boss Reseller Remix ladies. We're super excited. Boss Reseller Remix 2023 is coming up. It's Yay. the third year. We're going to talk about all that. I'm super excited to have my new co-host Trish here, Super Sale Trish. And uh, yeah. This is her hey. first interview, so we'll get My into it. My first interview as co-host. It's very important, girls. Don't mess it up. You never forget. I'll try not to embarrass you. Thank you. I can't make any promises. <laughs> I'm going to try not to laugh. There we go. Laughing is fine. Being hey, correct. so I would just like to say, you know, congratulations on making it to year three. I mean, it's a big deal. How excited are you guys? Super excited. <laughs> 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 Get that question. what is new this year then for 2023 what's new for year three well so katie here uh what is new we have a few things that are that are new um i feel like you know for those of you who have been to the boss reseller remix you know what it's all about for those of you um that haven't it is a three-day conference reseller conference in vegas where vicky and i are located um, and this is our third year. And so, you know, we feel like it's been a really successful event both years. We feel like each year we've been able to build on it and do, um, more and, and, and bring more content, more value to the people who attend. Um, and so this year, you know, we've got a few tweaks, a few things that we're doing a little bit differently. One thing we're doing is we are starting a little bit earlier on Tuesday, you know, Monday night, um, the 16th is what the date it'll be this year. Monday night is when we have our meet and greet and Tuesday is when the conference itself actually starts. And so in the past, you know, we've always had um, our, our registration start at noon and then we have a few sessions after that kind of ease into it. This year, we're just going to start a couple hours earlier. So registration starting at 10. It doesn't seem like a big change, but it does allow us to put a couple more sessions in, bring a little bit more content for everybody. Um, another thing we're doing is, uh, we, we are bringing a, a live game show Ooh. of I'd flip that they're going to be entertaining us, uh, all three days of the conference. Um, after lunch each day, we're going to kind of, you know, bring a little fun, a little levity while people are digesting their delicious lunches, um, and have a little bit of fun. If anyone's checked them out on Instagram and YouTube, they do a really fun, uh, reseller showdown game show that they do that's that that is just really entertaining and we're excited about that bring a little fun and games to the to the conference and then uh i would say the other big change is i feel like this is going to be the year of the podcasts because we we actually have three reseller podcasts that are going to be at the event recording i believe we've got uh get thrifty which is the the arc thrift store from colorado it's their podcast it's really cool they are going to be there. Um, we also have eBay for Business podcast is going to be there. And then there's this little podcast I'm not sure if anyone's actually heard of before. It's something, I think it's Seller Community. Something, is that what it is? something, something about seller. that. Yeah. Something have you guys heard of that before? No, never. Doug, have you heard You mean the Seller Community podcast? <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> But that's three podcasts that's that are going to be there. So I think it's going to be a great opportunity for people to kind of get in and network. And maybe like, I don't know if you, if you want to kind of get out there, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of you guys are going to want to be interviewing resellers and get some people in some episodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's get, great. Some good, get some good content for each of the different podcasts. And also one more important thing that Katie ha did not talk about that's new this year, and I know we'll talk about it a little bit more later, is that we have a full virtual ticket experience this year. True. Last year, we brought it in as a pre-recorded virtual experience for people um, and got to see how that was received. And this year, we actually are going to be full interactive, where you're going to be able to view it from home, communicate in the chat, ask questions um, of the panelists and presenters and then you'll be able to go back and view it basically forever <laughs> it's going to be there forever you can go back and view it at any time and if you're not able to attend in person you'll be able to see it after the fact or if you miss a session because you know you, you, 
you got Vegas the night before, or, you know, you overslept a little, or maybe you got stuck in a networking conversation with someone and you missed a session that you wanted to see, you'll be able to go back and see it when, when you go home. There you go. There you go. Uh, Teresa, would you say as a team, you're settled in or are you still learning? Oh, we learn new stuff every year. I mean, we've got some of the basics down. You know, there's a lot of things that we did the first year that, you know, it's just new and we had to figure it out. That was just seamless for the second year and will be seamless for the third year. But every year there's something we get a curve bar ball thrown. We're adding something different, something new. So um, I would say the most part, the it goes pretty smoothly. I would say um, we definitely try to add more value each year and um, bring in one of the things is we have all new speakers this year. So that's a pretty big deal. It's not, a, it's not an easy task, but we um, accomplished it with a great deal from great help from the community. And so I'm excited about that. So tell us each of you, tell us what's the biggest thing you've learned over the last three years, either about yourself, each other, um, you know, the community, what's, what kind of has been something that, you know, you guys really didn't know before this? Well, I'll, one of the things that I, I mean, we, we started off all three of us saying that we wanted to be able to talk and have meaningful conversations with every single attendee. We strive to do that every year, but I think that we will continue to strive, but it's hard. I won't say it's impossible, but it's a lot harder than it sounds. And we continue to strive to do that and have meaningful conversations with every single attendee. What about you two? Um, I think the most important thing that I've learned th through the years of doing this and attending reseller events is how necessary they are in the community. Uh, I think that in-person reseller events are, 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 it's kind of the, the benefit is immeasurable. It really doesn't have a lot to do with the cost associated with it or anything like that. It's just, um, you know, meeting fellow resellers and finding that those that, that community and the people that you connect with is something that you just cannot do online in the same way. In person is just so much better. And, um, you know, as someone who I've said this before, but as someone who never wanted to be a joiner, I never wanted to go to one of these conferences. I already had friends. I didn't need people that just did what I did for friends. There was no point in that for me. Um, and I went to my first event, which was eBay Open in 2016, and that changed my life in many, many ways. And and I'm not saying that lightly. I know it's it's something that people use that phrase very, very um, glibly, but it's absolutely true. It changed my life in so many ways. And I think every single one of us can say that ab ab about how the reselling community and in-person events have specifically changed our lives. Agree completely. Katie? Um, well, I'd say for me, what I've learned um, is really about the generosity of our community. I feel like the whole idea behind in-person events, like what Vicki was saying, there's just something so special about them. And that experience of being with other resellers, it, it's not necessarily all that different to, you know, when it comes to where you go, whether it's eBay Open or our event or any of the other reseller events out there, no matter what, it, it comes down to resellers coming together is like this incredible, indescribable experience. But what I do think um, is has really changed things for me is what's different about our event is because we have it at the Blind Center, um, which at the time when we started, you know, we love the Blind Center. We love what they do. We love that they have an eBay uh, component to them. Um, but it also was they had a venue. It was available. It worked for us at our budget. And so we ended up doing our event there. But because of that, it has kind of enmeshed itself into our event to where our event has become about giving back um, because we work with this amazing nonprofit. And so it, it's kind of just weaves itself throughout our event. And I think that that experience has allowed us to see how much that matters to the rest of the resellers in the community and how much it changes their experience when they come to the Boss Reseller Remix. You know, a lot of them talk about how it, you know, impacted them to see what the Blind Center does, how it impacted them to get to be a part of, you know, the the um, fundraising that we do as part of our event. Um, and it's just really shown that that is very important to a lot of people and not just to us. And it really does help shape the experience to be something even deeper than um, some other reseller events might be. 
I, and I just want to add to that to say that I, I've heard it expressed many times from the people that um, benefit from the blind center that work there and on the board and, and the, the, the visually impaired people that benefit from the facility itself, how much they enjoy our event. They love our event. They host events year long. This is the favorite event that they do. And I've heard this many times. I'm not making it up. <laughs> this no, is we their were just favorite told event. That again recently. We were just told again recently, this is their favorite event. They look forward to it. They love to be part of the experience. They love that they get to listen in on the sessions. They come in and join us out on the fun things out on Fremont Street. They love the whole experience and how friendly and outgoing everyone is. And that matters too. So like hearing that feedback from them, I can't imagine that we would ever want to or could ever have it in another facility. Agree. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's go around. We'll start back with Teresa. What's the single thing each of you are most excited about? There's a lot of things. I mean, the first thing that pops in my head is that you know, an opportunity to get together with resellers and to network and to visit and catch up and learn and all those same things. And coming off of the heels of camp listing party, um, I'm getting ready to go to FlipCon. It doesn't matter. Like I had, I, I, I got filled, I don't know, last month. We're going to go to another reseller event this month. And then eBay Open is in September. And then Boss, like I love that we get to do this every month. And um so just getting together and, and it's different people, different people come to each event. FlipCon's on the East Coast. And so there'll be a lot of East Coast people that did, you know, can't, don't make it to Vegas, can't make it to Vegas, whatever it might be. Um, eBay doesn't have a central thing anymore. So that's kind of a very different experience. So I like that I'll be able to see resellers that I know from all over. Um, Cause you know, Vegas is a great place because it's a destination city. So it's pretty easy for everybody to get to. And um and, you know, always excited to meet and um, learn from new people. Yeah. Um, I think for me, what I'm most excited about, and Teresa kind of mentioned this quickly earlier about us having all new speakers, you know, our first two years, we relied very heavily on our friends and our contacts and people that we felt had, truly had something to teach, but we also had already established relationships with. And so this year, you know, we made a very concerted effort. We promised that we were going to bring all new speakers, all new content um, that hadn't spoken at the remix before. And we have been able to accomplish that. And so because of that, we have broadened, we widened our circle. Um, we're bringing in people that we don't necessarily have uh, deep connections with from before. So a lot of new people that we're going to get to meet and interact with and learn Mostly from. Mostly new people. Like for, yeah. I mean, all new speakers, yes, but only a handful of them did I already know personally. Exactly. Like that, that's what I'm excited. To. I'm excited to actually meet these people that are coming to speak at our event that I've never even actually met in person before. I've probably, I've never had a conversation with 50% of them. Uh, Katie has spoken to every single one now at this point because uh, she's doing this that setup. But a lot of them I've never even met myself, and I've been doing some deep dives on their socials and, and information that they do, so that I'm I'm well versed in what they know, so that they can teach me. Like I'm I'm excited to learn from new people, new things okay, every so time. You've opened this up, that you've opened this discussion up. Tell us a few of these. I mean, you know, like we're all waiting here with bated breath. You can tell us a few of them, guys. Okay. Well, you know, we've got, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, any, any event you're going to want to have some of those speakers that have a large audience because you want to bring, you want to entice their, their followers to come, but also, you know, the reason they've got that large audience is usually because they have something that people want to hear about. So of course we've got some kind of big names, um, like we've got storage auction pirate, uh, Mike, he came last year just, uh, just as an attendee, um, and loved it, loved it. It was the first reseller event he'd ever been to. And he just couldn't stop talking about it and how much he loved meeting everyone. Yeah. And so we invited him to speak this year and it, we're really looking forward to what he has to say because he's not just going to be, you know, he's not going to be there to teach about storage lockers and things like that. He's actually going to be talking about his journey from uh, being homeless when he first started reselling um, to now, I think he's in the process of, of trying to buy a house. And hopefully by the time we actually have our event, it's going to be from homeless to homeowner. Um, but, you know, everything he's really accomplished and going through, you know, uh, in a very short period of time, like five or six years, all of this has been in the past five or six years. We're not talking like he was homeless decades ago and, and life changing. This is yeah. wow. he started his YouTube channel 
from his car. Yeah. Like this is pretty exciting. Stuff. And talking about things like mental health and just stuff that doesn't necessarily always get talked about. And so we're really excited about that. Uh, Kevin Brown, Commonwealth Picker. Um, I'm super excited to, to have him talk because he's going to be talking about uh, um, earning a full-time income with part-time effort. And we got to see him speak at Camp Listening Party. And let me tell you, his background is as a teacher. And he is yeah, very, he very speaking. He, he was loved. one of my favorite speakers by far. Mm -hmm. It was so effortless yeah. off the cuff. He's a very good... Um, He's a very good speaker. He didn't have a presentation, so to speak, no. like I did. I had to rely on a presentation. I, you know, he didn't have, you know, a slideshow. He just spoke effortlessly and so well. Um, and, and this is a whole different topic he's going to be talking about, but I'm really excited to hear him because I thought he was so good at it. Yeah, absolutely. So next we have John Dugan, uh, Resale Rabbit. And I'm excited because I know he's spoken at at least one event on a Panel. I think he did his first one sometime in the last few months, but this is going to be the first time he's actually presented and spoken um, as a solo act, if you will. And I'm super excited about seeing him because he's been around for years and he's gone through a lot of changes and like his his reselling style and kind of what he does. And he he has um, really great content on YouTube. He does some really cool stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing him a lot. Uh, we've got Tiffany Thrifting Vegas. Um, so we have with her lovely British accent that everyone loves so much. So technically we can say that, well, last year we had a Canadian speaker this year, we'll have a British one. So it's like, you know, we international, it's an international world. event, <laughs> you know, she lives here in Vegas. And wait, <laughs> know that speaking internationally, we can just throw in there that Adam Ireland from eBay is going to be speaking. Oh. Like how I did that. That's a good one, Teresa. Yeah, Adam Ireland, the VP of uh, the VP of eBay North America, I think is his title. General Manager of the U.S. Something like that. They don't got those titles always confuse me. But he he's a big wig, and he's actually going to be coming and speaking on the first day. And as Vicky likes to say, because she wants to make sure everybody knows, mm -hmm. they asked us if he could speak, and so we were. <laughs> see, Trish, if you're listening to this <laughs> through, through a podcast, roll stream, my eyes. I'm just rolling my eyes. eyes, shaking your head. It's kind of a big deal that they asked us if he could come speak at our event. I yeah. feel like it so, is. I'm sorry. For the five of you out there listening who agree that that is the biggest deal of it all. <laughs> there you go. I'm easily amused. Well, okay? eBay, eBay has been a huge supporter of um, reseller remakes from day one, as you know, as much as List Perfectly has been. So, yeah. I um, I'm not surprised. I think I think for us, you know, I think more so than like any audience that we're speaking to when we talk about this, I think it's more about how it makes us feel as the three exactly. um, people who started this event. It, it's it's a real vote of confidence because not only has eBay supported us all three years and they've sent people like they've shown us that, but this is like kind of the next level for us. So it's more about it makes us feel really good. It makes us feel legitimate. Validated. It's validating. Legit and validated. Validated. That's the right word. Yep. yep. Exactly. So yeah. So we've got like Misty Pate, Thrifter Junker, vin Vintage Hunter. We've got Sarah Styles, who's going to be doing some serious analytics and talking about the numbers, which Teresa is really looking forward to. We've got the consignment chat ladies. We've got uh, Kristen a Rural Squirrel is going to be uh, doing a, a presentation with Angie Resales resells oh look at that uh they have another podcast so right there that's a fourth podcast is going to be there they're going to be recording they're actually do lunch i know that's so many podcasts it's a bit much, right we should all interview each other at once yeah that would be fun my grandma's favorite saying to me was that's a bit much and she was telling me, and she was telling me i was a bit much um but yeah, we've got just some amazing speakers we're super excited about. Uh, we've, we have a session that's going to be all about posh. We've got some amazing posh sellers uh, that are going to be doing a, like a deep dive on, on selling on posh, which I think is really cool because guess what, guys? I'm officially a posher, okay? Ooh. I've poo-pooed the platform for many a year. And now, and now I have desperation. I've added it and I'm going to proudly be a posh seller. Okay. Yeah. I have 700 listings. And Will you be my time. PFF? <laughs> Teresa, that is too far. <laughs> it's over. I quit posh. I've been announcing it here. I've quit posh. So we were supposed to go to a live posh event last night that we ended up bailing on at the last minute. Uh, and, but, um, you know, uh, I'm excited about, about, 
actually hearing more about Posh. And we did have a small session our first year about Posh, but it was a Posh in relation to List Perfectly and cross posting. So this one is going to be um, a little bit more of a deep dive into Posh as a platform and some best practices. So I'm kind of excited about that because I'm quite sure that I do not use Posh to my, the best of my ability, even though I'm selling on it anyway. Well, and I had mentioned earlier about the whole uh, year of the podcasts and um, Maggie, who actually hosts the Get Thrifty podcast from Arc Thrift Stores, uh, she's actually going to be speaking, which this is going to be like, I think one of my favorite sessions because she actually uh, does all of the marketing for the Arc Thrift Stores. And there's like 34 of them in, in Colorado. So she has a pretty big job. I know just trying to market my own business is, is one thing. Uh, but that's what she does for a living. That's what she's paid for. Like the 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 podcast is kind of like a side gig, um, but her real job is marketing. And so she's going to be doing a presentation all about marketing your business. And so I'm excited about that. Talking about branding, that's going to be good. All of the different avenues, like social media, television, even uh, to market a business. That's and awesome. it's really nice to hear from a professional marketing um, person that how to market your business where it doesn't necessarily have to be about what you're selling or who, you know, or that it is even reselling in general, just somebody that's a professional in marketing. And I'm, I'm excited to hear from her. We've gotten to do uh, be on her podcast a couple of different times. And um, I don't know, she's super cool. I'm excited to meet her in person. And they're always looking for guests. So if you want to be on the get thrifty, pod, I'm telling you, like I was saying earlier, like for those of you who want to get your name out there and your business is out there, You've yeah. got like at least three podcasts, actually four that you could be pitching yourself to. Mm -hmm. Get on there. I'm up and pitch, baby. Get Thrifty Podcast. We found out that we had gone, she's from SoCal, and we had gone to some of the same shows way back. Uh, Very specifically cool. Violent Femme shows. So there you go. They and, put on an amazing show, I'll tell you what. Yeah, they do. They are crazy. They are crazy. And you mentioned Adam Ireland. He's a cool guy. He was briefly my boss for a while. And then when I bumped into him at eBay Open last year, I'll never forget those words he said to me. They'll let anybody in here. Hey, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. So thank you. So, speaking of eBay, so tell us about some of the uh, the sponsors. Who who are we who are we gonna see sponsoring? Well, uh, that would be uh, Vicky's department. She's the one. Well, Vicky's the one that's, that signs them. And uh, I got to look at my list one. here so I don't forget. I don't want to miss anyone. So, of course, we have um, List Perfectly, who's been a number one supporter all along. And uh, they've come back to be our title sponsor, our lead sponsor again this year. So that's always appreciated. Um, we're very excited about that. The presenting sponsor is the technical title. Um lead sponsor present you know anyone who's taking notes the big wig uh and then we have ebay coming back in um their third year as well and we have whatnot coming back this is their second year they were with us last year uh so the seller community podcast is is part of the list perfectly sponsorship and then the get thrifty podcast is a sponsor ebay for business podcast is a sponsor arc thrift stores my reseller genie, uh, Worth Point, both of coming back, Worth Point, th third year in a row. We have a company called Consign Cloud, which is a company that helps consignment both sellers and um, buyers. And so, because we're going to have a big um, session about consignment selling in general, we think that them having their company there will help people wanting to get into the consignment world. I also think right now with the economy being so crazy weird, a consignment and opening yourself up to the possibility of consignment is a very good place to be right now. And fun fact, I used to use their software when I owned a business. I had a consignment business, brick and mortar, oh, and, I actually, nice. and I actually used them. So good to was, know. It was good. It was a good software. So there's a ringing endorsement right there. A ringing endorsement from Trish. Not that anyone would care, but I'm just saying it was a good product when I owned it. That's awesome. Product. We have yeah. Seller Ledger, which is another accounting software similar to my reseller Genie, two separate companies. Um, they both do similar things, but a little bit differently. Um, Kevin, who is the owner of Seller Ledger, was the original creator of the program Outright, which eBay then purchased and sold to GoDaddy. Um, so he's been doing this as a seller a long time because I actually had it when it was outright when it was still free 20 years ago. Um, Wait, how old are you? <laughs> Sizely. Sizely is a sponsor, also the third year uh, with them. And then we just signed um, 
a couple of others. They're not quite on our website yet. Um, there Get is a Thrifty new one app. called the Get Thrifty app, which is an app for um, buyers and sellers. It's a, it's a, somewhat of a consignment app. It's brand new. It's in beta. It's a brand new company and a brand new uh, software and app. So it's not strictly related to clothing, which a lot of the um, consignment apps are related to clothing and things like that. It's not accounting related. It has to do with um, finding a consigner in your area and and things like that. So I'm excited to hear a little bit more about it. You're not associated with the Get Thrifty podcast. It just is a very... Similar, 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 similar name. name. And we have a few others that are um, that are still up in the air that may, may we're a little early. So some people tend to make their decisions uh, getting a little closer to the event. So we're in talks with a handful of others. Okay, so I don't care about sponsors. What I need to know, <laughs> you, all know me, you all know me well enough to know there's only a few things in life I care about. I want to know about the food and the bar. And the bar. And the bar. And the bar. There you go. <laughs> what kind of food are we going to have this year? What kind of snacks? Last year, the snacks were fabulous and the food at the party there's a big party the last night and there's a bar and well, I'm really known as a bar food and I just want to know about that let me let me start I'll let Vicky get into the food here in a minute but let me start by saying you know one of the great things about our event is like Trish or Teresa said it's in Las Vegas so <laughs> I mean come on there's a lot there's a lot of amazing things happening in Las Vegas um, you know, we, we, the event itself takes place at the blind center, which is about two miles away from downtown Las Vegas, the Fremont area. And so everyone, the vast majority of people stay downtown there. It's great because it's all this kind of like self-contained mini Vegas. I like to call it. It's all on this one street. All the hotels are super close together. Everything's walkable. Um, and so the very first night, the Monday night, we do a meet and greet and that's all in that same area. It's at the cat's meow. Um, it's everybody comes together. You get to hang out. It's like kind of a way to like get to know each other over a couple of drinks, kind of loosen things up a little bit. Some people come and maybe it's their first event or they're there by themselves and they're a little nervous. So it's an opportunity to just, you know, have some drinks, hang out, um, enjoy some conversation, have a good time. Um, also, again, because everybody is kind of staying in the area after, you know, every day when the event is over, you get to go back and you can hang out. There's like, you know, three uh, stages of live music out on Fremont every night. So you can go out, hang out, have a good time. You don't have to be drinking, but you can listen to music. You can have a soda or you can have a beer if you're Trish. Um, it's just a really, really fun time. There's a million things that you can be doing in Vegas and uh, either you can be going out on your own or we do organize a lot of stuff. Tuesday's kind of our free night. Wednesday night, we do our Fremont crawl, as we call it. We all meet up at Container Park, also walkable right by, uh, right in the Fremont area. We meet up there and then we all walk as a collective group down Fremont and it's just a really fun time. And then again, Thursday night, it's a final night. As uh, Trish was saying, there is a big party and uh, there's a cash bar, there's dancing and all kinds of fun stuff. But I'll let Vicki talk a little bit more about that as far as the food stuff goes. Well, the food stuff, um, as Trish says, the snacks, the snacks are good. So really good we provide um, we provide all the beverages and water and coffee service in the morning and you have soda or pop, depending on where you're from, uh, throughout the day. And uh, the bar is only the last night. Sorry, guys, it's not a bar all day long. Uh, but we have, um, because we are doing three days of the event, we have snacks all three days in the afternoon. They are freshly made at the blind center at their kitchen by their wonderful chef. Um, we're not talking just mediocre, like here's your apple or granola bar kind of snacks. Like These bar. are like yeah. fantastic snacks yeah. and pastries. Um, so we have that. So those are your snacks in the afternoon. In the morning, we're going to have some bagged snacks sitting around, you know, bag of chips or some cookies or whatever. In there's, case always you, in case you have, there's always something to munch on. You won't leave hungry. Um, but for lunches, the last two years, we brought in these gourmet food trucks for lunches and everyone's on their own for lunch, but it's on site. There's plenty of space to eat inside and out. It's a great time. We give you 90 minutes so that you have plenty of time to walk around and talk and sit with new people. But this year, we've actually asked the Blind Center, can they handle doing the food themselves, all of it? Well, the first year we had food trucks and the second year, the Blind Center was like, well, we want a food truck. 
And so they, they were like, can we have a food truck? We were like, yeah, <laughs> they basically created a food truck because for, of our event. Yeah. Which they use outside of our event, but it's because of our event that they did it in the first place. And so last year they actually were part of the food truck thing. And so then this year, this year they're doing all of the food. They're going to do uh, four or five different food stations. And it's basically your drinks are already free because we have the drinks all day long and it's going to be $12 per person for lunch. And you can get something from any one of the food yeah. trucks. And that's all to the blind center. And that all goes, all the money goes right to the blind center. So oh, it's just a really to support change. Them. That's a really good change this year, guys. Yeah. Well, cause they, they, they came up with, they were like, well, we want to do a food truck and you know, uh, Trish, you've been there. They don't yeah. do anything small. No, I Everything actually. Do, so last I, year I was working for List Perfectly, and I went and bought everybody's lunch from List Perfectly at their food truck because they yeah. had an app, so I could order it all from upstairs, and I didn't have to go downstairs and wait in the damn taco line. Because let me tell you, resellers like tacos. I mean, you they clearly they stand in line and they stand in line for tacos, and I was like, I got work to do. So I ordered it on the app. So we ate from their truck and it was awesome. It really was. Well, and that's the thing. And you, you know, you planned an event there too. When, when List Perfectly came, when you were doing your tour yep. and it's like everything they do in that facility from, you know, planning and decorating and just everything they, they do 150%. Agreed. And so they were so good with their food truck and so good with being efficient. Like Trish was saying with their app. That it, it kind of like bummed out some of the other food trucks because hard, they weren't like getting anybody coming to their trucks because everybody was getting the food from the blind center truck and from their taco station and everything. And so we just realized it would be a lot easier and everybody would be a lot happier if they just handled everything. So it'll be different. It's not going to be, it'll be tacos. It'll be burgers. It'll, I think they're going to have some sandwiches and salads. There'll be sandwich uh, and salad options. There's cherry options. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then the party we have is all catered. The party is fully catered as far as uh, food. They have all little finger foods, but trust me, there's a lot of them. It's very plentiful. You will not starve. It is not just a, a handful of cheese and crackers. No. Uh, it is a full meal. It's just not a sit down meal. There's plenty of food everywhere. And uh, there is a cash bar. And we did make some changes with oh, wait, the cash bar this wait, year. Wait, wait, let's let's have a conversation here. You talk like me. Okay, you, well, can she was saying, uh, you, can't be you, you can pretend you're from Las Vegas. You can pretend <laughs> you talk like me, dude. You do so, realize I'm saying this on purpose like this. You, yeah, say bye. Know, that you said bye like me to be a jerk. And I'm saying they all they all don't know that that's how you really talk when you around me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, when I'm in New England, yes. That's how you two met was over the dimension of that word. The word ba. Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Okay, I have a question for all of you guys because everybody that's here in this conversation um, has been to uh, the remix all times. What was your favorite thing that was catered at the, the party? The end party? Yeah. Those little uh, sandwich uh, thingamajigs. The sliders? Yeah, the sliders and the I think the first here, I like food. The first thing I really like the uh, chicken and waffle gigs. I was going to say chicken, chicken and, and waffles. waffles was good. I was thinking out there. I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. chicken and waffles were good. Chicken and waffles are good. Um, we what This year we did get some blue moon at the bar for Trish. What? That's right. Life is over. It's, it's perfect. Special request. Special request. Well, the, the, here's the thing. The guy who comes with the bar and he brings, you know, he's got all the liquor and everything to do mixed drinks. And then his only beer option was like Heineken. Heineken and is and I'm like, is like Heineken and maybe Coors Light or something Wasn't like that. even Coors Light. But Heineken, I'm like, this is disgusting. Who likes Heineken? Because it like goes flat within two seconds of opening it. And as the words are coming out of my mouth, up walks Wade. And he's like, oh, Heineken, my favorite beer. And I'm like, oh, now I know why Heineken's here. <laughs> what is, what's wrong with you? My favorite thing was the uh, buffalo mac and cheese. Uh -oh. It was really, really delicious. Uh, that they there will be more year. of that this year. Yeah, for sure. Was there a it's slider really with a jam on it? Yes, the bacon bacon jam on top of the Angus sliders. I don't know if we have those this year or not, but they are really good. Those are really good. <laughs> but let me tell you, one of the things, so we have all the snacks and stuff during the day, um, and then the afternoon, it's more of like a dessert bar. Um, it's all kind of desserty stuff. And let me tell you, when Trish was there and did um, the listing or the the listing party in the USA tour, 
So it was like a whole Mexican food theme. We had, you know, tacos because of Vien. They make amazing tacos. So it was like tacos and chips and salsa and everything like that. Homemade but the salsa. dessert, but the yeah, the, the salsa was homemade. Ridiculous. The dessert though, guys, guys. Okay, at the remix, they always had horchata to drink. And I'm I'm not a horchata person, so I didn't have any. At this thing though, they had horchata ice cream that they made. Horchata what? ice cream. And it was what? let me tell the story. It's my food story, Victoria. Okay. Horchata ice cream, but they also had freshly oh. deep fried churros that were so warm and fluffy while crunchy on the outside at the same time. And let me tell you, I did dip my churro in some horchata ice cream, and it was the most amazing thing that ever ever happened. We're gonna try and make that happen for okay. our. Okay. And do you want to know what the the saddest part of that entire story was? What? I did not have any. Well, good thing we're gonna make it happen for you, Trish. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Good thing you have less responsibility at this event, and you can actually just enjoy it, and you can have some churros. She's gonna be working. You can be working, but it's not like running it, so I can. I can elbow my way up to the front right. for some, <laughs> for some churros. <laughs> Throw some elbows and get some churros. Exactly. Me and my blue moon are coming through. <laughs> blue moons. I don't know if you have blue. I don't. <laughs> you do. I don't think snorting is allowed on the on the, the mic here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, most likely you won't be drinking beer during the afternoon snack, but I guess that's up to you. Yeah. Have you seen, have you <laughs> met this person? I have control. <laughs> so, I don't know. Are Never we going to be able to keep this to two hours? Okay. So one of my favorite things overall is always um, opening night, icebreaker night. And I know it's particularly important to you three. Especially the first year, you said it was really, you were nervous. Like, I think, Vicki, you said, is anybody going to show up? Tons of people showed up. Last year was great, too. So tell us about opening night. What are you planning? Are you doing anything different? Uh, do I get a chance to sing this year? I don't know. So this year, we are doing it at the same place as we did last year, the Cat's Meow. However, we did take note last year was our first place that first time we were able to have the event there. And um, it was a little loud, not going to lie, a little loud, a little crowded. We were only allowed to have half of the facility last year. They didn't quite know how many people we were going to bring. And, you know, it is what it is. Well, we've established ourselves now. <laughs> so now we have the full facility. We don't have just half of the room, so it won't be quite as crowded. And we're also going to control the volume for the first couple of hours so that we'll have it a little bit lower so people can actually hear each other and talk and not yell across the room to each other. And there was a little bit of that happening last year. I know that found, some people found that frustrating. Um, so we did rectify that situation and it'll be different this year. And yes, Doug, I hope you do put your name on the list to sing uh, because I sang twice last year. So it's your turn. Yeah, before I had, I had actually planned and before I knew it was over. So, but that's also because people like to hand Snoop Doggy drinks. So that may have had something. It happens. It happens. But I, I will sing this year. I promise. It's tough to be popular, Doug. Uh, somebody <laughs> and yes, it is a karaoke bar, just so you know, but we'll start the karaoke after the first couple of hours so that people can, uh, you know, like I said, have some conversation. They can talk and they can get the heck out if they're not into karaoke. They can come and talk and do a little mingling and then cut so out. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to stay the entire time, but um, you should because we're fun. Um, so <laughs> tell us, <laughs> tell us once you buy your tickets, um, you guys have a private Facebook group. So tell us a little bit about that. So when once you get once you buy a ticket, you'll get an email with a link to the Facebook group for the event, and we start a new group every year, and um, that allows you to uh, chat and mingle with. The people that are coming to the event so you can talk about you know maybe shared ride from the airport shared somebody needs a room where are you staying all that sort of stuff and also when we're at the event if you want to sh share an uber over to the blind center you can you know you can message in there hey i'm leaving at 8 30 does anybody want to you know whatever and it's just a great way to even kind of break the ice before you get there and so um if you <clears throat> buy your ticket just you'll get an email message um and just be sure to read all the information in there and um, sign up for the Facebook group. 
Well, and I think it's great because people can share rooms. You know, um, last year, I know that like Cheryl Hinton found somebody to split a room with um, mm -hmm. through that. And they now they're friendly, you know, so like it's a great way to be able to meet another reseller and maybe like share some of the cost. Yeah, I think that that's ideally why we started it the first year was more for people to meet and maybe share costs and share rides. This year, at the last couple of years, we've we fine tuned it a little bit more. So now we're sharing information about hotel discounts or flight discounts yeah. or um, things like that. Or um, the other thing, too, is that you're going to have not only the attendees, but also the speakers, the panelists and a lot of the sponsors are in that group as well. So that's where you're going to be viewing all of your information from the event virtually, both in person, uh, well, live streaming, but also after the fact. So you can actually follow up and ask questions with people after the fact. If you've happened to see somebody's presentation and you want to ask them more qu in-depth questions about it, you'll be able to contact and connect with them through that uh, group. And the group stays up all year. And so... and actually it stays up forever and we're, we haven't closed it out from the previous years either and people continue those co connections so that's something really nice but also Teresa runs our virtual monthly meetup that is incorporated around the boss reseller remix and our boss facebook group um and that you don't even have to have attended anything uh, related to the remix to to be part of the virtual meetup it's just something another service that you know we're trying to provide to the community and just to be clear, you also have a regular Facebook group. We do. It's we have all the things. We have all the things. But wait, before we get to the regular one, you, if you buy a ticket to Boss in person or virtual, you will want to make sure that you sign up for the Boss Reseller Remix 2023 um, Facebook group because we will be live streaming stuff in that Facebook group. Yeah. That's where all the content is. And, and Teresa, you just mentioned... It's for the virtual ticket holders too, which is really cool because if for whatever reason you can't come in person, you get to kind of still feel like you're a part of it. You get to be there. You get to be part of those conversations. You get to see everybody's pictures because a lot of people are uploading pictures and videos during the event. Um, you get to you get to feel like you're experiencing as much as you can without actually being there. And I and I will be doing some live streaming from some of the extracurricular fun stuff like the meet and greet and the Fremont crawl and the party. So you're going to get to see some of that stuff live that other people who don't get a virtual ticket and don't come, aren't going to be, have any access to. Nice. Much like Marvel, we do have a boss universe. Nice. Yes, Teresa. <laughs> it all started, it all started with the original Facebook group that Teresa started um, the business of online selling success. Is that how I say it, Teresa? That's how you say it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of like where it all started. So everything kind of branches off of that. And so we have the the remix, which is the conference. We have the virtual meetup that, that uh, Vicky was just talking about. Uh, and so all these things are kind of pieces that come together to uh, bring content and support and community for people. Um, and the remix is just one piece of that. Well, and as somebody who is not really involved in the remix, um, I would say that Boss is like the best place um, for new for brand new sellers. Yeah, it's sure. really great for newbies. You have if you're just getting into this and you find this video, go and join the Boss um, Facebook group because it's a place where no one's going to say like, "Go look it up yourself," or you know, "Why are you asking such a dumb question?" They're just very lovely people and they want to help and they want everyone to succeed. It's a really great Facebook group. Do you want to know a fun you. fact? You sure. know, one of the one of the main reasons why I started a Facebook group, because I got tired of every other Facebook group telling us we couldn't ask tax questions, because guess what? You can ask tax questions. You don't have to be an expert. I can you can ask me, how do I file my taxes? And I can tell you and I'm not being a tax expert. I'm telling you how I file my taxes. Yes. And that's a very annoying trait in a lot of Facebook groups. And, it, you know, experienced resellers do know how to answer these questions. Right. Yes. And I also think that it's just a nice supportive group. If you have questions, you know, you don't have to worry about somebody saying like, I'm not, yeah. or There's like. There's no snarky. Yeah, Snarky's no, not allowed. Exactly. We have a zero tolerance policy for yeah. snarky. It happens we, occasionally and those people get booted. <laughs> they get booted yeah. real fast. And right. I will tell you, one of my favorite, one of the things that I'm, that we're most proud about with the Facebook group is that the community sort of polices themselves. Yeah. It's not like we have to be in there ruling with an iron fist, which is what none of us want. And it's just kind of like, we have this very supportive, positive, 
encouraging and we have a very high engagement rate in the Facebook group. And so um, I really like and am proud of that. And um, so, yeah, so if you're new or you're looking for someplace safe to be where you're not afraid to ask what you would consider would be a dumb question, no question is dumb. And um, you can you can join that Facebook group and find a nice, comfortable home there. Agreed. There's no judgment. Much like the Remix event, we do try to be welcoming and all-inclusive. And it doesn't matter if you are a brand new seller or if you've been selling for 25 years. It doesn't matter if you're selling $1,000 a year or a $1 million a year. There is something to be shared and learned from everybody there. Everybody, everybody has something to share and it has input and has value to contribute to the conversation. You don't have to be... Uh, you know, a YouTube expert or a multi-million dollar seller or any one of those things to be valid and heard yeah. as an, as, as somebody that's learning or teaching, you'll yeah. see that our panelists and our speakers are not all people that you've heard of before, because they may not be people that are visible in the community as far as being, you know, YouTube personalities or, or anything like that. And that's okay. You, you know, there's people that are great at what they do that have nothing to do with social media. That doesn't yeah. mean that they cannot have something to teach us. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Speaking of from experience, you have not experienced late night Vegas, especially Fremont Street, if you haven't walked around dressed as the Pope with <laughs> Trish beside you as a pink lady. Oh. And originally I thought it was a bishop outfit until Pope Benedict died and he wore my outfit on his uh, viewing, whatever you <laughs> said. wore it better. That's what I want to know. <laughs> I did because I had a corona. I don't think he did. But, um, he did because he was alive. <laughs> That's right. I was alive. Amazing. The amazing part of this whole thing is that people actually thought he was a priest. People would come up to us in the casino and be like, Father, I don't think you should be in here. I mean, I, it was the craziest thing yeah, ever. It was, it was crazy. Oh, and an Uber rider was like, Oh, I thought cardinals usually have their own cars. Thank you. Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> no we didn't have the Pope Mobile on Fremont oh, Street. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. But so. Tell us about the closing party. Um, you know, there's cool little details, whatever you want to reveal. And tell us about closing parties past. And I know there's some there's some similarity that, you know, kind of crosses over. But tell us about the closing party, closing parties past, maybe the band and uh, some of those details. Yeah. So our first year, you know, it, it was just about having a big party, having a DJ, having, there is a live band that plays the, and of course it is the uh, blind centers house band. And of course their name is the broken spectacles because why wouldn't they be? Best, um, best you know. band name ever. Agreed. Yeah. So Agreed. all of those elements are still there because we think it works. We think it's really fun. The first year we didn't really have any guidelines. We were just kind of like, you know, we have, there's a red carpet there, which will be there again this year. And we're just, Kind of like, you know, if you want to dress fancy, dress fancy. If you don't, you don't have to. It's up to you. Um, but a lot of people dressed up the first year and it was really fun. And then last year we were like, well, this takes place in October. We, why don't we just make it a costume party? Kind of like a Halloween party. And so that was really fun. And, and there were a lot of people who dressed up in crazy costumes. Um, the only problem is with the red carpet, we have like the step and repeat sign where you go get your, your picture taken by a professional photographer and if you're in costume, like Teresa was, uh, was a <laughs> minion, and we realized you can't even tell it's Teresa in the picture. <laughs> All so, you see is this big, round, yellow thing. So it was falling over. But it was super, super fun. Everybody had a great time. Uh, but this year, we thought, um, how about, you know, especially because, you know, a lot of us uh, are, are clothing resellers. Um, obviously, we're all resellers. A lot of people do clothing and, and vintage and so we decided to do a uh, vintage prom. And so again, everything is, it's always, you know, uh, it's always uh, optional. You don't have to dress up, but if you want to dress up, we're doing it as vintage prom and you get to pick which decade you can come in an eighties prom dress. Um, you know, uh, Doug, you can come dressed as ducky from, uh, you know, oh, pretty, and pretty and pink. pink. Oh, and, uh, yeah, so there's, there's just like Isn't a million that... things. There's a, you, know, you can get your powder blue tuxedo with the big ruffle uh, shirt in the front. You can come, you can do 90s prom. You can do like dumb and dumber, like in the orange tuxedo or there's a, there's so many different possibilities. And as far as dresses go, I mean, there's like a million possibilities. I mean, what thrift store have you not walked into that doesn't have okay. a million gaudy prom dresses? But you, maybe so, somebody will do 60s or 70s or 90s prom. So when I move, 
Happy says, say what you say here, buddy. I can't. This is the yeah. way it always is. That's why I'm telling you to say it. <laughs> when I move and unpack boxes that have been packed away for seven years, I'm going to pull out my prom dress from the 1980s. I am positive it won't fit me, but <laughs> maybe I could do something with it. <laughs> You totally should. Even if you made like a shirt out of it or something with it. No, you should. It's a lavender Add a purple. to the back to make it a little bit bigger and then wear a jacket over it. Or in the Lavender side. purple. Well, and last year, and Doug, Doug, you could get a great, get great text and we'll go together with my lavender purple prom dress. You're asking me out? <laughs> oh, there you go. I don't know. I, I think Doug's going to I have to ask your wife first. <laughs> Oh, I know what I'm doing. Oh, See, man. now you got your wheels turning. So I know. last year we also did uh, for the Fremont crawl, we did thrifted outfits. We and again, optional, but we just told people like, you know, it was crazy thrifted outfits. And I don't know, I think I don't know if we're doing that again this year. Probably we, we have said I don't really see any reason to, to change it up. It was just kind of fun, you know, if people wanted to dress silly or dress crazy. Some people took it as an opportunity to also wear um, costumes. So it's really just like, I guess, a, a free pass to be silly and just let it, let it all out. Last year, we had several attendees that dressed up as other attendees, yes. which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Our friends uh, Dawn and Lori dressed up as Katie and I. We had uh, Katie dressed up as Ryan Roots. We had um, a couple, uh, uh, someone that dressed up as Mikey Bags of Money. Um, <laughs> We had so, and these none of these things were discussed in advance. It was just very, and it, the reactions were hilarious. I thought I was a genius uh, deciding to dress up as somebody else within our community, and then apparently, <laughs> and I a whole not. bunch of people showed up, and then a bunch of people stole her thunder. <laughs> yeah. Not that original. Um. So interesting. Okay, so that's kind of. So tell me where, and we can send people to find all this information. Where can they buy tickets? Where do they find out everything that's happening? Oh, this isn't a video. I was going to say in the link below. He's pointing down below. <laughs> Our website is resellerremix.com. And so that's going to you know, take you directly. Uh, you can find the link there to get a ticket. You can also see more information about speakers, sponsors, everything, the schedule, all that stuff. Um, but I always say that the best place to kind of really see what's going on um, and any current updates is to follow us on Instagram. And on Instagram, we are Boss Reseller Remix. I think that's the best place as far as social media goes. Um, but I don't know. Any other suggestions? Nope, you got it. No, then you, the website's great, but you do a particularly great job on the Instagram, just the build up to the enduring and all of that. It's great. On the Instagram. That would be all Katie. That would be all oh. Katie. Yep. Both the website and the Instagram, all Katie. Awesome. Yeah. We had thought we would ask you what kind of sellers should attend Boss Reseller Remix. But when you guys were talking about the Facebook group and how open you are and what kind of sellers, whether you're a brand new or a million dollar seller, I think you kind of went over that. But and so instead, I want to ask you, why do you think people should attend? Much like I said earlier, I think people should attend because I think it's important, especially now, to invest in yourself and invest in your business. Um, I, I, you don't know what you don't know. So attending something like this, other than the most important part of the networking and the building relationships and things like that, you're going to learn something from every speaker. It may not be something that you're going to find as applicable to your entire business from every single person, but you will pick up something from every person that speaks and every person that brings and shares their knowledge that you can work with and apply to your business. Are you going to model after every single person there? No, that's not possible. But hearing different viewpoints and different ways to do things is what's going to help you to grow your business and whatever that growth may mean to you. Maybe that means it's time to hire somebody. Maybe that means that you're trying to expand to other platforms. Maybe that means that you want to try your hand at live selling or buying storage lockers or anything of the above, you're going to find something from watching people and learning from people there. And it may not even be the people that are speaking. It might be someone you strike up a conversation with over lunch. Yeah. You just don't know what you don't know. 
And I yeah. think that that is great for ev every seller at every level, new seller, seasoned seller, ready to retire seller, trying to grow seller, part-time seller or full-time seller. I think there's something for everyone at this event. And I'd like to add that I think being in a room with a platform, whether it be eBay, whatnot, something that you sell on, being able to know somebody at a platform that you can get their business card, that you can contact them if you have a problem. I think that can be su superiorly helpful. It can be really empowering to be able to know somebody that you can call when you're having a problem. And I think that one of the things that these events do very well is opening up that kind of relationship. Well, and I also think that, you know, this job for most of us, I mean, Vicki and I are, are lucky that we both are in the same business and we're a couple, but for most resellers, um, it's a very, very lonely job and it, you know, you, and you're self-employed. So it's a real grind and it can be, um, it can be overwhelming. Uh, it can be, um, you know, you can definitely get burnout big time, especially when maybe your sales aren't where you want them to be. It can be really hard to stay motivated and feel good about what you're doing and to feel confident. And I think, you know, there there's something about coming together with other resellers that's like out of your element, away from home, away from your workspace and like just getting somewhere where you can cut loose and and unwind around people who understand where you're coming from and you can learn and you can laugh and you can have fun and you can party and all those things wrapped up into one. It's so re-energizing and it's so what a lot of people I think really need to be able to get back home and be motivated again to build their business. And I cannot overstate that aspect of this event. I agree. Teresa, what would you add to any of that? I will add that, you know, we've talked about networking, that's big, but if you come to these events, you have to, I mean, here's the thing, you're going to be in a room with people that understand you and get you. You have to be, if you are an introvert, you have to, I mean, it, it's not that hard. Hi, I'm so-and-so. I sell, so I sell, you know, dead people stuff, whatever you <laughs> Whatever you're going to you sell dead people. And like, well, <laughs> that's that's you to yeah. I sell dead know. people stuff. <laughs> but I mean, just, just to talking to different people. I have gone to the last couple of events. I am getting ready to pivot my reselling model. I'm going to be moving to a space, a place where I have space. And I'm going to be working on doing wholesale. So I have spent, I talked to some people last year at Boss Reseller Remix, knowing this was coming up. I talk to people at um, the uh, camp listing party. I'll be talking to people at FlipCon. And by the time I'm moving into my new space, I will have these connections made that I can easily and quickly pivot to a whole different way of doing my reselling business than I've done in the last 25 plus years. And so, but to do that, you can't be the wallflower standing on the wall being upset because nobody's talking to you. Yeah. You got to walk up to somebody and say, Hey, I'm so-and-so I'm from this place. This is what I sell. What, whatever your opening line is. And think about that. If you're that shy person, think about that, what your opening line is going to be and just use it a hundred times during the week. And we try really hard. I'm sorry, Trish. That's okay. We try really hard, as Teresa said earlier, to make sure that we talk to every single person there. But obviously, we're also running an event, so we can't be your babysitter. But we've we've made those introductions many times in the last couple of years where we see a shy person and we go and get an outgoing person and put them together so that they can go and, and you know, be their best selves and meet new people. But you've got to put yourself out there a little bit first. You've got to come there with the mindset that you're going to step out of your comfort zone. If you are not a social person, I get that it can be very difficult. But give yourself the opportunity and, and make the best of the opportunity that's in front of you with, with the people that you're there with. Well, and you, you never know what kind of uh, opportunities are going to open up because you attend an event like this. Um, I know I was standing next to Teresa. I won't give out any info, but I was staying next to Teresa when she was making some deals with another <laughs> seller about going in together on um, buying inventory. And it's like, you know, something like that, like learning how to meet people and make those connections and pool your resources so you can do bigger buys and open up more doors for yourself. Or, you know, the three of us met because of uh, reseller conferences and now we have one of our own. And now we're, you know, Vicki and I are married because we met through uh, a reseller conference. Um, 
you just never know what kind of opportunities are going to reveal themselves to you when you open yourself up to that. And in fact, I know I'm going to give this away because it always uh, makes Casey mad that we gave away his secrets. Casey buys has bought pallets of inventory from the Blind Center, the freaking venue we're going to be at. So because he attended an event at the Blind Center, like I know. So it's like you never know when that stuff's going to come up, and he's going to be mad because now I'm I'm telling other people they might be able to buy stuff from the Blind Center. It's okay, he's not doing it anymore. <laughs> but what I was going to say is, if you come and you're shy, you know, come and find Doug and I. We are not running the event. We'll be more than happy to introduce you to a few people. Um, Let me I tell you, if you're an event, Trish is the best wingman ever. <laughs> Because all you have to do is walk up to Trish and say, hey, do you think you could introduce me to so-and-so? And she's like, I don't know, but come on, let's go. And she will do it. Like, this is, this is, Trish knows how to work a room like nobody I've ever met. Or if like, you see a cute girl or a cute guy, she'd probably help you with that too. Totally would. I am, she's I'm a good wing, wing person. I'm totally Absolutely person. the best wingman. Either way, either way, you want to so, meet somebody, let me know. Professional, personal, she's on it. So the other thing too, to, to, for those of you that might be a little nervous about attending an event, you might not know anybody, you might have a little social anxiety. We have specifically kept this um, event at a smaller size. We will keep it at the Blind Center as long as we can. We won't go to a different venue to make it a bigger event because we want to have that small boutique feel and it will never be more than 400 people. And so it's not going to be an eBay open with 2000 people. And it's not going to be some other, you know, something with 1500 people, whatever. It'll be small enough that you don't get lost in the crowd. And, um, and like I said, if you, there's going to be a lot of people that you might, I mean, I love when we go to these events and you find somebody, you know, some of these big YouTubers and you find somebody that has watched them for years and years and changed their lives. We get that. I mean, you, some people come and they see Katie and Vicky, Katie and Vicky, they've watched their channel. And these people have changed, Katie and Vicky have changed these people's lives. And so they come and they get a little starstruck and they don't know what to do. And it's, I mean, it is the sweetest, funnest thing to watch and just to be able to have that connection. But, you know, you can walk, you can walk up to somebody that, that's a YouTuber and you don't have to wait for an introduction. But if you're that person that needs an introduction, Trish is your girl. <laughs> but you can go and say, oh, my, like, hey, I, my name is so-and-so. I watch your show every Sunday and, you know, walk up to Katie and Vicky and, and have a conversation with them. You don't have to wait for an introduction at these events. That was yeah, my please favorite. come up and interrupt us. Please come up and introduce yourself. I, th I think I speak for all five of us when I say that. If you want to know any of us and, or meet any of us, please come up and introduce yourself. Uh, you are never going to be annoying or interrupting come interrupt because there's never going to be a moment where somebody's alone and they're not talking to somebody. Just come interrupt. It's okay. Yep. Exactly. Just stand there, wait your turn and it will, or interrupt. And, um, you know, you can chat with them and talk to them or whatever, but do not waste this opportunity and sit there. Look, we all need downtime. Sometimes I just, it's like, I need five minutes of not talking, but do not spend the whole week not talking because you're not if you're that's you come see me come see katie vicky absolutely go see trish and maybe doug <laughs> maybe, maybe. poor doug oh. oh i always have a good time um well thanks thanks ladies katie and vicky congratulations on breaking one million uh views on your youtube channel the katie and vicky show fantastic seller resource i talk to a lot of sellers and you guys come up all the time yep and then sure. Teresa Thanks. Cox. We uh, appreciate it. Of course. And Teresa Cox is building her James Bond evil villain selling <laughs> letter. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, so congratulations on that, Teresa Cox. But thanks for joining us. Boss Reseller Remix, always an amazing event. Third year. Go to resellerremix.com for all the info. October 16th to 19th in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, maybe I'll get Katie to go to the punk rock museum with me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll go see a horror movie on the night off <laughs> or Barbie. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm going to Barbie tonight. Barbie left. <laughs> so, but, uh, thanks for joining us. But before we go, anything to add? Thanks for having us on the show. Thanks for always supporting the remix. We appreciate you and all of our friends at list perfectly. 